Hello and welcome to the Fossil Huntress podcast. Today on the show, we're going to talk about pterosaurs, those flying reptiles, the pterosauria, that soared our ancient skies during most of the Mesozoic, so about from 228 to about 66 million years ago, so the late Triassic to the end of the Cretaceous. The first pterosaur fossil discovery goes back to 1784, and this is from Solenhofen. So these are beautiful late Jurassic limestone beds in Germany. So it's the Solenhofen Platterkock or the Solenhofen limestone. And here we see a rare assemblage of fossilized um, specimens, so vertebrates and invertebrates in remarkable detail. During the late Cretaceous, this area of the world, so the um, area that would become Solenhofen, was part of an archipelago at the edge of the Tethy Sea. The area included placid lagoons that had limited access to the open ocean, and here the salinity rose high enough that the resulting brine and brackish water couldn't support life, so the Water, the water at the very bottom was completely devoid of oxygen and scavengers were mostly absent. So you've got this beautiful muddy silt forming the limestone in an area where there's low oxygen. And this rose or gave rise to some beautiful preservation that we see when we unearth specimens at Solenhofen. Some of my favorite specimens from Solenhofen include things like sea jellies and other little soft-bodied organisms, but you probably know some of the more famous specimens from there. Archaeopteryx is from these same beds and shares the same beds with that very first pterosaur that was discovered back in 1784. It was George Cuvier who first suggested that pterosaurs were flying creatures, and this is as early as 1801. And since then, we've had a chance to take a look at their wingspans and their wing structure and discover that they're some of the earliest vertebrates known to have evolved powered flight. Pterosaur wings were formed by a membrane of skin and muscle that ran between their bodies and and their big fourth finger, sometimes called their wing finger. And you can picture them almost bat-like, but they had wing spans that went out several feet. So some of them um, had a wingspan of up to 12 meters, so 40 feet. Quetzalcoatlus is one of the biggest of the pterosaurs and had an amazing wingspan. We divide the pterosaur lineage into two major types, the basal pterosaurs and the pterodactyloids. So the basal pterosaurs are the Ramphorhychoideas. So these were smaller animals with fully toothed jaws and long tails. Their wide wing membranes connected to their hind legs, and this would have allowed them some maneuverability on the ground, but with an awkward sprawling posture. So I kind of picture them walking like big bats. That's probably not accurate, but it's how I picture them. And they were better climbers with flexible joint anatomy and strong claws so they could grip and move around. And the basal pterosaurs preferred to dine on things like insects and small vertebrates. The later pterosaurs, the pterodactylids, evolved many sizes and shapes and lifestyles. So they had a narrower wingspan with free hind limbs and reduced tail. So they, the tail tucked in a little bit. They had long necks and large heads. And on the ground, the pterodactylids walked better than their earlier counterparts. So they were more maneuverable. They had all four limbs walking smoothly in an upright posture. The pterosaurs took to the skies and they were genuine flyers. They could flap or soar. I don't know if you've noticed in birds today, but some birds are flappers. So you see crows out there flapping away in the wind. And then you see birds like eagles that just coast along on the wind. So pterosaurs could do both of those behaviors. They could flap or they could soar. 
Their bodies were covered in fine hair to help them regulate their temperature. So these animals were warm-blooded. Pterosaur finds are relatively rare as fossils go, and it's the same is true for bird finds. It's because their bones have a very light construction. But there are some places where we do find them. You need a, a place where there's exceptional preservation and, and some kindness to those bones. Um, in 1828, our lovely little Miss Mary Anning in England found the first pterosaur outside of Germany. Um, so she's, she's credited with many fossil finds and she was an amazing uh, fossil huntress along the Dorset coast back in the beginning of the 19th century. Later, in about 1870, um, Olinel Marsh found a pterosaur in the Neobrara chalk. So this was then the largest known pterosaur. And this was an amazing find because this was the first find in North America. So we find these special fossils around the world and as we discover them and our techniques improve, we can use CT and X-ray and examine um, their movement through 3D modeling and, and computer programs. And we've learned a ton, both from the specimens themselves and the, the history and mysteries that are explained through those rocks and the way we interpret it as we move forward. So I'll leave it there and thank you for listening.